Spring Reverb might be the last type of reverb that hasn't really been pulled off in the digital realm. And I think that has actually been solved by the plugin I'm going to show you today. Have a look at this thing. It is called the XL305R by Audioscape. Audioscape, you're probably familiar with if you're into recording stuff because they make audio hardware, like, like physical hardware units, including this reverb but they decided to make a plugin version of it as well, which is awesome for people like me that work primarily in the box. But as mentioned, it's spring reverb, and that's been the thing that's been elusive to me. I, I have so many great sounding reverbs, including like all the Valhalla DSP stuff that I absolutely adore. The new plate reverb by Sound Toys is incredible, but I didn't have a spring reverb that I actually liked. I've mentioned this a bunch on my podcast, Self-Recording Band Podcast, and it's just like a known thing. Where are the good spring reverb plugins? And I'm really happy to say this one sounds awesome. I've only played with it a tiny little bit, and I'm going to take you through on pretty much my initial run through. Like I've had it open for maybe 10 minutes, and I figured I better record this <laughs> so you can see what I'm seeing. and I can go through it with you and we can hear it on. Uh, I want to try it on guitar because that's where I like spring reverb the best is guitar, that classic, you know, Fender amp sound, and then on vocals as well. Spring reverb on vocals is like secret little weapon for sure. And one final bit of backstory on this plugin and how I got it is that I met up with Chris Yetter and uh, the Audioscape team in Hamburg just a few weeks ago for the Studio Zene conference. The Self-Recording Band podcast was there doing live episodes with all the keynote speakers. And we interviewed Chris Yetter, who founded Audioscape and still runs it today. And he told me about this plugin. So I reached out and said, hey, I would love to check it out on my YouTube channel. They sent it to me, but they haven't asked for anything in return. They're not reviewing it. They, they, there was no strings attached. So just wanted you to know that in advance. All right. So first thing, this is what the plugin looks like. It's actually two plugins. We have the XL305R, and that is controlled right here with the switch. But we can swap that to the XL305, which is just a different version of this reverb. And they do sound different. They both sound cool. We're going to start up here. Of course, there is a linked and unlinked. So if you're running this on a stereo channel, you can keep those parameters linked or separate if you want. But what's really cool is they've thought of this mono drive and mono return function. So mono drive, this took a little bit for me to wrap my head around, but say we're running two different guitar amps into the same aux with this plugin, a stereo instance of this plugin on it. And it's going to react differently on the left and the right side. But if we want to sum those two channels to mono and then have the reverb react to that, that is when you are going to click mono drive. Now, conversely, if you want it to output a mono reverb rather than a wide stereo reverb, you have a mono return button. So that is just kind of a cool way to manipulate it on the fly. And mono reverb is actually really underrated in my opinion. I think stereo reverb sounds better on its own all of the time. But once you actually get it into a mix, mono reverbs can really make a lot more sense leave space for other things. Yeah, it's worth trying out. Trust me. Rather than talking about the rest of the controls, let's just try hearing it. I've got a guitar here. I'm just going to play it soloed and we're going to manipulate it. And this guitar is just being reamped through the Neural DSP Corey Wong, just if you're curious. And here we go. Let's start with the mix at 100%. And I have this as the mono to stereo. So this is a mono guitar, but we're going to be given a stereo feedback. So a stereo reverb, essentially. <laughs> All right, and we can manipulate the EQ curve of this reverb. So like 600 is going to be really heavy for this guitar. Suck that back, clean it up. Let's remove some shimmer. And let's try boosting that mid-range again. This sounds cool. And again, this is just max. That's 100% wet. Uh, let's try the 305 so we can really hear the difference in the reverbs. You'll notice that it copies over the same parameters. Mm -hmm. Let's brighten this one up. Mm, I actually like it dark. Let's go heavier on the, the bits. That's really cool. It's like... Uh, very short and, and darker reverb, more moody. Let's go back to the 305, that kind of longer, more shimmery reverb. And you'll notice that like we don't have uh, a time parameter when we've grown so used to that with reverbs. Like again, Valhalla DSP, amazing plugins, and you can do whatever you want to make like these unreal reverbs. But this is not that. This is like making you work with something as if it exists in the real world. And I think for Spring Reverb, that's probably the trick. Okay, now let's play with our mix and actually blend a guitar tone together. I 
It sounds nice. Let's go 100% dry. And creep it back up to like 50% where I was liking it. Really enjoying that. Let's go to 305. Hear what that darker reverb sounds like. Mm -hmm. I dig this. And again, fully dry. Bringing it back in. Now I'll show you that mono return. The mono drive wouldn't do anything in this case because we're just feeding it one guitar, but the mono return would. Where we have a stereo reverb, it's giving us back, it sounds wider than we put into it. The mono return will then sum that up to just give us a mono reverb back. So wide, and now let me click that. Right, click of a button, that's done for you. I do actually appreciate that. Uh, vocals are somewhere I could see myself using that button all the time. Let's try playing with that mono drive now. I got rid of that example channel we had, and now I've got two guitars, the left and the right, and now I'm just gonna go, I'll throw it right as the first insert on the bus for these two guitars. Because I'm inserting on a stereo track, it automatically goes to the stereo version of it. There's no option for a mono one, of course, but it is acting as dual mono, just on the inputs as far as I know. one's a little bigger 115 there i can actually fit it on my screen <laughs> all right so that sounded similar let's solo those guitars again so we can actually hear what's going on with the mono drive so again two guitars are now being fed into a stereo aux and the reverbs are reacting independently now i'll click this mono drive and we should hear that reverb reaction change because it's being fed a mono sum of the two guitars instead so here we go Toggle it back out. Sounds wider to me. Mono drive again. So the reverb sound gets more cohesive, more tied together in my opinion. That could be good or bad depending on what you're going for. Now the mono return, we'll try that again, but that'll make more sense in this example because we're actually feeding it two signals. So starting fully wide again. And let's hit the mono return here. So the reverb got mono, but it actually kept the guitars wide. I think that sounded really bad in this example. It's not probably what it's meant to be used for, but you can hear what it's doing and understand the plugin a little bit at least. So gonna leave that off and then let's just dial in a final kind of guitar sound here and then we'll move on to trying it with vocals, which I think is gonna sound really cool. All right, so I'm gonna put the band in and just kind of dial in something I like. That sounds nice. Let's try the shorter one. Dry it up. I like that. Just gonna bypass it so we can hear it without it. Put it back in. Cool. I dig that. That's really moody. It's working for me. Now I want that vocal to be moody and vintage out as well. Okay, let's go find our lead vocal, mess with that verse. Just for the sake of this example, I'm gonna turn off all effects I have on this channel for uh, reverb and delays, time-based effects. Leave like the kind of tone character stuff on. And I'm gonna throw it right on the channel rather than making an aux and just mess with it that way. Okay, let's solo out our vocal and have a listen. You can Pull that back. If your heart has leaks, but it's you, it's Very lush. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Like in the shorter one for sure. Every night alone, away from you. 
Well, she tastes like rain on a lake and dry, and we seen some shit. They're gonna miss mm. her smile. She could so that's the mono return. At a thousand miles, but there's nothing I can do. Which I actually quite like. I think that's gonna let the guitars be wide. We'll have to hear it in the context, but the mono return sounded really nice to me, actually. Let's hear it with the band. And I'll toggle this. You can hear the difference. All right, going back wide. Like, both sound amazing. Like, really, really good. Uh, I want to try something creative. I'm going to automate it so that it's mono for the verse there. And then when we hit the pre-chorus, it's going to go wide, which I think will be a cool effect. In Pro Tools, all I do is just turn on all the automation. And then I just got to go find that automation parameter. Mono return. And right here, I'm going to keep it mono. And wide here. All right, so it should just be mono reverb for these two lines we're going to hear, and then we'll go into the pre-chorus, and it should get wide for us there. So let's have a listen to that. That sounds just killer. Love it. Okay, but one more thing we could do is maybe we want the longer reverb in the verse where there's more space, but we wanted to go to the short for this pre-chorus. Let's just automate that instead. So I'll go to our verb mode, and for our verse here, I'll set that as our XL305R, which is the longer, kind of more lush reverb. And then when we get over to the pre-chorus, it automatically switches to XL305, which is the shorter, darker one. Let's have a listen to those same two lines going into the pre-chorus. That's cool, but now I actually want to reverse the width uh, parameters we had. So I will go back to our mono return and I'm going to make it wide here. And then for everything else, I'm going to make it mono. Here we go. Very cool. Very, very cool. It's very flexible in that way. Like it, this has a sound and you're either going to want that sound or not want it, depending on the vocal you're working with, the guitar you're work working with, whatever you're mixing. And you'll know if this is the tool for that. It's not like one of these, I'm going to do all these different types of reverb tools. It's I do this type of reverb. You can't even control the decay time really, right? I think you could probably manipulate it to some extent with the input drive, but it is insanely awesome. It sounds great. And I think that's really just getting started. You could try this on so many different things. It'd probably sound awesome. It fills that spring reverb hole in my own arsenal of plugins. So I'm really stoked on that. And if you want to try it for yourself, there's of course a link in the description of this video where you can go see if you want to buy it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And there is a free workshop for you if you want to learn how to level up your mixing skills down below in the description of this video as well. It's totally free. You don't have to buy any plugins or anything. So please do check that out. And if you want to keep learning, I've got another video coming for you right here and right here. Here. Okay, we'll see you in the next one.